In this video, we'll explore the interface of Pencil 2D, we'll learn about the drawing tools, we'll learn how to use the timeline to create different frames, and how to change colors, and in the next video, we'll start doing some basic animations. So let's first explore up here in the top left-hand corner. We have different tools available. I'm on the pencil tool right now. We have an eraser tool, a brush tool, a hand tool, a move tool. If we hover over, it'll tell us what these are. So this says it's the pencil tool. And also in parentheses is N. That means if we press the N key on our keyboard, we quickly jump to the pencil tool. So I'm using that tool now. I'm just left clicking with my mouse to create some lines. So we're just drawing in here. You can do freehand shapes or draw different things. And we're drawing everything on a single frame. If we look at the bottom, we're on frame one of our animation. So everything we draw here will only be shown very quickly flashed once in front of the viewer. If we draw something we don't, uh, if we wanna make a change, maybe we draw something we wanna undo it completely, we can always go to edit and then undo, and that will undo the last thing we drew. We could also hit the control Z keys on the keyboard, holding down control and Z will undo the last thing that we've done. And then if we grab the erase tool, we can erase just parts of our uh, drawing. So this is a, it's drawn in bitmap and raster. This is not a vector right here. So if we zoom in very closely, we see it becomes pixelated and all these different lines, but we can click and erase. And this behaves sort of like a regular eraser in that we have to go back and forth many times to completely erase the line. Uh, to, to scroll in and out, I can use the scroll wheel on my mouse and we can zoom in close and out away from this canvas. The selection tool is kind of nice. Let's go ahead and draw, let's grab the brush tool first actually, and you'll notice the brush is just a little bit thicker and has some different options over here to the left that we'll learn about later. But if I wanna draw some things here, and then maybe I want to move the location of this triangle, I can come over here and go to the selection tool. And that lets us create a selection. If I left click and hold, I can create these dotted lines sort of around here. Now. If we left click and move within here, it's just going to move the selection box and I can resize and change the size of the selection area. But to actually move what's inside of the selection, we come over here to this next tool, which is the move tool. And the move tool lets us actually move what's inside that selection. Now just be aware if ever you have things that overlap like this and we go ahead and do a selection, uh, we can't select out just this triangle and move it now without actually moving everything within the dotted lines, which in this case, it sort of cuts apart this object. And you'll see if we were to maybe select only half of this circle and then go to move, it would move half of the circle like this. So just be aware that that's how that move tool works. So if things overlap, it get, becomes a little bit difficult to move those. If we have a closed shape, so I come back to the brush tool and draw a circle. If it's completely closed in like this, we can grab the bucket tool, or what's this called? Yeah, like a fill bucket tool. And we can change the color over here to maybe like a red, and then click inside this circle, and it will be filled with that color. To fill this uh, triangle, we can maybe change the color. We change the color by clicking around the outside of this circle, and then we can change the lightness and darkness by left clicking and holding down inside this square. So I choose this color right here, and now if I left click, it'll choose that, but again, we see that it's not completely filled in. The top is a little bit different there and there's some white around the edges. So it's just filling in every pixel. That's because our brush has a little bit of softness around the edge of it. This color picker tool lets us choose a color that's already in our drawing. So if I wanna get back to this color red, I don't wanna actually have to find it from over here. I can just grab this color picker tool and then click on that color and it changes to have that color selected. Whatever I click on will change to that color. And then this last thing, uh, or a couple more things, but this uh, smudge tool lets us smudge and sort of mix things together. It doesn't work super great and you probably won't use it very often. Uh, this tool here is for polyline. So the polyline tool lets us click once and then move around. When we click again, it creates a straight line between those two points. So we can use this to create straight lines. When we're done, we don't have to close it off, but we can. We hit the enter key on our keyboard and it puts that in permanently. Then we can erase it or move it or do whatever we want with it. Um, this tool here is the pen tool. The pen tool just lets us do freehand drawing and has a little bit different options down here that we can play with. So for freehand, we have the pencil, the pen, and also the brush. 
And then we'll play around with some of these options here. We see we have size. We can change the size of the brush. This feather, what I was talking about earlier, it's how hard it is. So if we want a hard edge, or if we want to have this feather be way high and have a very soft edge, oh, too high. It makes it just softer and sort of fade out. Um, let's go ahead and save this drawing now. So if we go to File, we can click Save, and that's going to save it in a .pclx. That's a pencil format that only this program can open. So I'll call this myanimation.pclx, and we'll save it on the desktop. So I go to Desktop, and then I can just save it right here and click Save. And now this is saved on my desktop. If I minimize the program real quick, I can see where to go. Here it is on the desktop, myanimation.pclx. And again, this isn't something I can share with someone yet. This is just the project format if I want to get in and make changes. So if I were to close out of this and go new and just have a blank thing here, I can always go to file, open, and then reopen my project by going to where I saved it and clicking on that project and clicking open. And it brings everything back to how I had it. Um, one last thing we're just going to play with a tiny bit is this timeline. If I come down here, this shows us our timeline that we're going to use to create our animation. Right now we're on frame one, but if I click this plus sign, it'll advance to frame two, and everything gets sort of grayed out a little bit. And now I can come and draw the next progression of my drawing. In this case, we were just looking at the drawing tools, so we don't really have an active... Uh, it's not going to look very great, but we just keep hitting this plus right here to add more frames. And every frame we add kind of makes the backgrounds go lighter and lighter. And then we see what we drew in the previous frame. But we're going to play with this a lot more in the next uh, video. So go ahead and uh, I'm going to end this here. Let's check out the next video where we'll be creating a basic animation and learning how to export that uh, in a format that people can see and that we can share. Thanks for watching. Leave your questions and comments below if you have any, and we'll see you in the next video.